The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. This is the fifth of our six-week Bronx Democratic primary debate series as we present the candidates in the 86th Assembly District that includes the Bronx neighborhoods of Fordham, University, Morris Heights, uh, Mount Hope, Belmont, and Tremont. There is no incumbent in this race as it became available when Nelson Castro resigned as part of an agreement in a corruption probe. We have four candidates with us tonight, and let's meet them to my direct left. It's Kenny Nunez. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Haley Rivera. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Victor Pichardo. Good evening. How's it going, Gary? And Yudelka Tapia. Good evening to you, and thank you for joining us, one and all. Iris Baez and Elizabeth Ortiz did not respond to our invitation, and Hector Ramirez has not shown up tonight. Uh, folks, uh, to ensure balance in this and all of our debates, we do not accept phone calls, but you, our viewers, can make comments or ask questions by posting on the Bronx Talk Facebook page or sending an email to bronxtalk at hotmail.com. And I will tell the voters and our candidates as well that we have extended the length of our program to one hour so that we make, make sure to uh, include all of the comments and maximize our discussion this evening. Candidates, here is how our uh, forum will go. I will direct a question to one candidate. That candidate will respond. After we will have a short, free-flowing dialogue between the candidates with the original respondent having the final word. We will continue our questioning in that manner. And as moderator, I do reserve the right to ask a follow-up or move on to the next question as necessary. At the end of the program, each candidate will give a one-minute closing statement. By prior agreement, uh, the first question goes to you, Mr. Nunez. Thank you once again for joining us. Uh, let, let's start here. Um, I mentioned the name of Nelson Castro. His uh, presence kind of looms over the district because of what happened in the circumstances with which he left um, uh, office. Um, he was quoted recently as calling you his stand-in candidate. What is your relationship with Mr. Castro, and, and why would you be running as well, his stand-in candidate? Well, thank you. First of all, thank you for having me in the program, Gary. Uh, I am no stand-in for anybody. I am my own free uh, person. I am running because I believe that our community deserves to be represented properly. Uh, I am uh, a friend of Mr. Castro. Uh, nothing to do with, uh, with politics. Uh, he is supporting my candidacy, but uh, nothing to do with, uh, with any standing or anything to that regard. Mm -hmm. Okay, others want to comment on it? No, I mean, I think, uh, and thanks for having us, I, I think, um, I think that the communication has been lost somewhere in the process in this, in, in this, in this campaign because uh, Nelson is, and, and I, I'm also a friend of Nelson, and, and you know, it's sad what happened to him. We have to admit that, and, and for all of us here, I think I speak, it's, it, it was a big surprise. Uh, but moving forward, and that's the past, I think that, you know, uh, there, there's also been folks saying that Nelson is supporting my candidacy. So um, I welcome everybody who supports this candidacy. At least I do that. I, 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 don't, I don't stop who, whoever walks in through my campaign door saying, you know, I'm here to support. Um, so we welcome everybody. And, you know, it's interesting that, that Kenny mentions uh, Nelson supporting you because that's also, I, apparently he's 
going around saying the same thing. So, uh, but this, I, I guess we we'll get a chance to ask the no, others if he's supporting no. them as well. I don't know. And this raise is not about Nelson Castro, so it's it's it's, it's, uh, it's something of the past. Okay. Others want well, to come. Uh, you don't, and then you, Mr. Nelson Pichon. and I, of course, as a district leader, as a mm -hmm. Democratic district leader, uh, elected in 2010 and, and re-elected last year with 85 percent of the votes. Uh, of course, that we have to to be friends and work together at some point. And, uh, but I mean, he's not supporting my candidacy, but I mean, many people in the community, this election is about the community. And, and many people in the community has to be served by Nelson Castro over the year, over the years that he was elected. And those are the same people that are gonna be uh, electing me as the assemblywoman. So many of them, of course, are supporting me because they're part of the base of the 86. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't think that is any relationship with Nelson. I mean, being the, the one that's supporting one candidate or, that person was loyal to him and now he's supporting one, one of us. Mm -hmm. I think it is about the community and the issues that are there in the community. And people are really uh, um, concerned about those issues and, and that's what it is and about. Hopefully we'll get to many of them tonight. Well, see. I think at this point we need to move forward with this conversation. I think uh, whatever my opponents do in terms of their own campaign, that is their prerogative and, you know, however they decide to move forward. Um, but, you know, I, I do agree with, uh, with my opponents here. It's about the future of this community. Who actually has the better ideas, uh, the better experience, and the wherewithal to actually serve this community with dignity, with respect, and uh, that folks can look up to them and rely upon them as their assembly member, whoever that might be. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nunez, you get uh, the final word on this if you want to add something. What I want to add is that at the end of the day, it is about the best interest of the community. Uh, we all can agree that the community has suffered uh, not just for what happened to Mr. Castro, who in my belief did pretty good for the community, uh, but other elected officials that have uh, done wrong by the community and we need to move forward and uh, pitch in, unite the community and work for the, for the best, best interest of, of that community, of okay. our community. Thank you very much. Mr. Rivera, uh, in, in a way th this leads right into the question for you. You worked for a disgraced and now jailed former uh, Senator Pedro Espada Jr. In fact worked on his re-election campaign the last time around despite the scandals that were surrounding him. Um, yet you've made integrity a central campaign issue. Boasting in your literature of a clean and positive campaign then you put out a negative email criticizing one of your opponents. Um, and you have also called for the ouster of Shelley Silver, saying it's time to clean up Albany, yet you've come out to support Elliot Spitzer for a city controller. Is integrity a matter of political convenience? No, I think those who, I mean, and it's good you bring it up, because I think this is the first time that I have a, an opportunity to clear that up. Uh, and, and it's a good place, a good forum for that. I think that, uh, look, I work for Senator Spada. I'm not going to say, you know, I was, I was on his staff as part of uh, working in, in the office and dealing with constituents, and, and I don't hide that. Um, and, and the fact that some people say, well, why didn't you mention that in your resume? I've worked a lot of jobs less than a year that are not on my resume. And I've done, you know, maintenance and cleaning bathrooms and all, that's not on my resume. So you can, you know, you can bring that up. Uh, but obviously the, the topic here is spot. I think, you know, he, he got what he deserved and, and maybe he, you know, he deserved a little bit more than what he got, but um, that's done and over with. But the experience that I, while, while my time is there, uh, you know, and, and you they'll come and have some experience having worked with elected officials more that at the end at the end of a phone calls when you you go to the elected officials you get the run around uh, working for an elected official you can get results done and for me at the end of the day that's what it was all about helping whatever the issue that people were coming in constituents were with their issues that was my priority um, so you know and the other points that you mentioned I think that uh, I've been very honest and very straightforward in my positions and sometimes that may criti that may contradict some of my past uh, positions, but uh, that I stand against asking for Ellis, uh, Shelley Silver to resign, uh, that's something that I've said even before I jumped in this race, before I even was thinking about it. Uh, and the Daily News has written stuff up, it's been out there already. Just because I believe there's a lack of inclusion among Latinos and minorities in the leadership, um, and now with all the scandals that we know about, the sexual harassment, cover-ups and whatnot, I think that the problem there, uh, as all of us are trying to get to Albany, there's an issue there of who's the top. And the top in this case is Shelly Silver. So uh, until he's gone, I firmly believe that there's not going to be a lot of changes. If anything, we're probably going to see more elected officials coming out of there who, who will be disgraced. Two questions. One is, uh, mm -hmm. which I will follow up. One is, um, so why, I mean, you weren't aware that uh, Mr. Espada had done wrong or would people in his office um, weren't aware of it. And then you uh, went out uh, as part of his campaign, which of course, we don't know what Mr. Espada 
uh, uh, wanted, but it, it technically is not part of the job. And then also the, the follow-up question, uh, you're, you can feel any way you want about Shelley Silver, but then um, uh, Elliot Spitzer, one would think, has the same or uh, more egregious uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, problems than um, Mr. Silver mm -hmm. does. And then we'll let the other candidates. Well, I mean, you know, one of the things some people say, why are you supporting Elliot? And, and, and the reason why I'm at, if we remember correctly, Elliot was the one who talked about giving, providing license to undocumented immigrants. He was the governor at that time. And mind you, it was only two years. He was also the one who started the conversation about same-sex marriage in the state of New York. That it didn't happen under his term, we know why, but he was the one who had the guts to stand up to do that. Uh, so I think you got to give credit what credit is due. Obviously, you know, I'm not justifying what he did and, and you know, the, the, the system took care of it or didn't take care of it, however you want to see it. Uh, but the truth of the matter is he is a candidate, he's on the ballot, and, and I stand with him 110%. Okay. Others want to weigh in? Well, I mean, that's sort of, um, we have to, we have to understand, um, obviously, the, the, the issue at, ma at matter here. It's about moving the community forward, right? Um, we have to not think about the past and sort of the uh, black marks and, and the stains that former elected officials and other individuals who are looking to seek office, um, you know, continue to plague our community. At this point, what we really need to do is, is move forward. And again, we're talking about, you know, I'm, I'm proud of my record. I'm proud of the folks who I've worked with. And I'm proud of the service that I've been able to, to provide to my constituents, uh, well, to my, to my neighbors and my community. And uh, it's about looking forward and not looking backwards. Okay, others? I, I think uh, that, uh, true, is that the community is looking for, for people to have the integrity, the transparency to, to lead the community forward. Uh, but uh, also it has to do with uh, the records that you have in the community, what you have done and what is that you believe in. Uh, and I believe that at the, at the end, the voters are going to be able to distinguish who are the people actually who have the integrity, who are the people that have been here long enough, and who are the people that actually have the experience and have built their coalitions to bring results to the community. And I think that's what is going to come ultimately on okay. September 10th. Mr. Nunez, I assume you want to have Yes, a word? Uh, I want to uh, side with my, my colleague here, Mr. Rivera, when I say that, uh, you know, although the candidate we were speaking about is uh, stained with, uh, with his candidacy of what had happened in the past. He has a track record that speaks for itself. I, I happen to, uh, to like what he's, what he's done uh, when, he was, uh, when he was a governor. And um, I happen so you're to- You're saying you would support Mr. Spitzer as well for I controller? Would. I would, I actually like what he did as, uh, as governor. I mean, he was only there two years. And I, you know, there are so many worse things that politicians have done and what he did Yes, it is an immoral thing, and I do not support what he did. Uh, but he, the work that he did do, which was for our state, was, um, was impeccable. Uh, one thing that I want to mention with regards to Judelka, she just mentioned with regards to time and, uh, and experience. A lot of the politicians that, that have been disgraced had the time and the experience and went up to Albany and disgraced us all. So, yes, we need to have... Uh, experience and a lot of time in our community, but we also need to be transparent and need to be someone with an open door policy in our in our constituency. Okay, Mr. Rivera, you get the final word here. No, I, I mean, you know, I think that we, at the end of the day, all of us four or five, or whatever many candidates we have here. Uh, well, I, I, all I know I, is four, because that's it's all here. four. Uh, <laughs> But, and, and it's good for the voters actually to know who, who's here and who's not. But at the end of the day, I think that we all have good intentions for this community and this district. And, and I think something that Yudelka said, it's at the end of the day, it's going to come out to, you know, the coalitions and that you build in this community. And I, and, and I know Yudelka uh, has been there for a while working that. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I also think you have to have some courage to stand up. And, and the popular thing, you can't always roll with the punches and, and go with whatever is the popular thing. Right now, uh, you know, people said I was crazy to go against Sh Shelly Silver, a very powerful guy. So maybe I am. Uh, but for me, that's having courage uh, to stand up. And, and I firmly believe that we need change, not so much only in the district, but you need change in Albany. And for all of us to preach that we're going to change everything, uh, the district, you have to also be realistic of what that monster and that beast up in Albany is like. Uh, so until we see that change up there, we're, we have an uphill battle. Uh, Mr. Pichardo, um 
this is uh, also about support. Uh, it's sure. great to have support of the county organization mm -hmm. and other, uh, a number of other elected officials and groups. Mm -hmm. But isn't there a downside in this election in particular when mm -hmm. uh, Nelson Castro, of course, toyed with the allegiance of many people in the community mm -hmm. um, and pulled the wool over their eyes? Don't people need an independent candidate, someone who can speak and act on their own rather than reflect the status quo? I saw an article where the borough president said he'd be glad to have you on his team. Well, if you're elected, would you be a team member playing follow the leader mm -hmm. or an individual independent assemblyman? I think my record speaks for itself. Um, again, my, my experience in working for uh, U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer for four years, starting as an intern and working my way up as part of his senior staff, to being the director of constituent uh, community affairs for, US, uh, for State Senator Gustavo Rivera, speaks for, itself, speaks for itself. I've um, had the opportunity to sit down with hundreds of constituents and deal with their issues from the from you know keeping people in their homes to help them navigate the uh, the system of uh, bureaucracy that that plagues our government I am effective uh, uh, public servant um, and my concern and my only job is to serve my constituents and I will serve my constituents with honor and dignity and again all of my career I've done is make the system work for us now we'll continue to work and make sure that the government works for us and that is beholden to the communities that, that, that they're supposed to, to represent. Thank you. Others? Mr. Nunez? Go yes, uh, I, want to, I want to say, if you mentioned before I stand in for somebody, I would say Mr. Pichardo would be. I mean, uh, Mr. Pichardo is only here because his employer, uh, Gustavo Rivera, Senator Gustavo Rivera, with all due respect, uh, wants to have the Senate and the State Assembly at his feet. And uh, it is run-of-the-mill uh, politics as usual where they want to have control and not want to have a, an independent State Assemblyman to actually do the community's work. Yes, he has work for other politicians, but it speaks for itself when myself and, and my colleague here have done work for the community and so does, so has Judelka, without being elected officials, without having worked for, 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 a, for a politician. We've done it because we don't need to be elected officials to do the community's work. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, it, is, it is actually, I mean, I've been in this community for 25 years, and I've been an independent uh, uh, woman working for the community, mother of four sons that I raised in this community. And I've been a voice for many people in this community. And I believe that uh, the community actually needs somebody that stand by the community and that don't get along just to go along. And, and, and I, I, the community is sick and tired of that. I think, I mean, uh, uh, that's exactly what's happening now and that's the reason why the community is gonna be so vocal in, in September 10th and, and just, just saying no to the establishment once again because it, it is just, I think, I mean, it's the right thing to do for the community that they elect, the people of their own, that they actually believe that have been there for a long time, that I have worked with them, that have built coalition, that have solved problems for them, that know the issues because have lived through the issues. And I mean, I, I did that while I raised my son. I was the president of every school that my sons went when they weren't going to school. I know what the issues are. Okay. And I've been there to solve the problem for my community. Thank you. You were the only one who yeah. didn't weigh in. If no, you no, I was waiting. I, I know that, that Pichardo has the last word. But, you know, I think that at the end you mentioned a word of beholden. Look, and I can tell this to the voters. If you're looking for somebody who's going to be beholden to Chuck Schumer, to Gustavo Rivera, to the Bronx Democratic machine, I am not your guy. I think we already know who that is. Now, if you're looking for independent, I think you even have other choices. Obviously, I'm putting my record out there. As Kenny said, you know, I, I've been in here running a nonprofit for 11 years without the resources and all the connections and all the Chuck Schumer and Gustavo and all of them. Uh, to try to provide uh, to volunteer opportunities for our youth and get them off the streets and get them to do good things. So, and, and Yudelka speaks of her record and, and so does Kenny. So, if, again, if, if, the, if, if what the voters are looking for is somebody to be beholding to them, then obviously we know, you know that, that, that Victor is not that person. Uh, and, and I'm putting my record out there as well as Yudelka and as well as Kenny, but um, I use the term in, 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 a, in a forum uh, previous that, you know, we have a parachute candidate here. And that's, you know, uh, Victor, which I can't even say I've known him because all of a sudden he happens to live on the same street that I did, uh, that I do. So the community needs somebody, and you mentioned independent, 
but somebody who has a track record, not working with elected officials, but working for Thank this you. community. Well, obviously you have something to say, I'm sure. To all my opponents, I, I can say this without any certain, without, with 100% certainty, I'm incredibly proud of the record of that, I've, that I've been able to, to produce. I'm incredibly proud of the fact that I've been able to help you know, hundreds of people stay in their homes, deal with the, with the bureaucracy of, of government, and I'm proud to stand with public servants, not politicians, like Senator Chuck Schumer, who's pushing for comprehensive immigration reform on the federal level. I'm proud to stand with elected officials like State Senator Gustavo Rivera, who was there to talk about ethics reform for as soon as he was elected. And I'm proud to stand with elected officials who beat the stain that was such a dark cloud over our community, like Pedro Espada. I'm proud of that. I'm not going around handing out literature with a picture of President Obama basically saying that he's endorsing me and pulling the wool over people's eyes. I'm proud of my entire record. I don't hide it from anyone. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Tapia, you're the only one out of the four who've actually been here before. You had run for city council in the past. But uh, during that race, you ran up a tab of more than $100,000 that was uh, owed to the campaign finance board. A campaign staffer recently told the Gotham Gazette that this was an administrative issue and that all the monies would be paid back. If this is how you manage funds for a campaign, one would wonder about your ability to administrate the complexities of an assembly office. Well, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the issue with the 2009 campaign it was an administrative issue. The last report for the for the campaign finance board was not submitted, uh, but everything has been submitted uh, after that. And, and of course, I mean, that is a, a common occurrence in, in the campaign finance board uh, where fines are imposed to candidates for lateness and, and for not submitting papers on time. And that, is, uh, that happens that has been to many other candidates. And, and I, I, that's something that I am not proud of it, I regret. But uh, that's something that, uh, that uh, my lawyers took care of it. They are uh, challenging all those things. Every single paper, every single report has been submitted to the campaign finance board. And th all of that is public record. And I believe that that is not going to uh, uh, block the way I'm going to manage and I'm going to administrate the, the public. Uh, I never done. It was some, uh, an honest mistake, simple mistake that I took care of it. Okay. Others want to weigh in on that? Anybody? Well, I, I, I think it, it, it is, it is, again, it is open for public record, and you know, obviously, you know, one slip here, one slip there, and unfortunately, you know, what ends up suffering is our community, and we need to move beyond that. We need to have and elect people who have uh, strong records of public service, who understand how to make government work for the people that they that that they want to represent, and that it has a clean track record and a clean record of. You know, you know, we all make mistakes. We're all human. But again, this is sort of a pretty glaring mistake, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, the voters need to be informed about that and they need to understand that. Okay. Well, the voters uh, are understand that and they know that uh, as human we make mistakes. And that uh, when, when we correct our mistakes, uh, that's the way to move forward. I think we did that. The voters would understand that. Uh, the voters know my record of 25 years working for this community, raising my fourth son in this community. And I came to this country when I was pregnant with my second son uh, 25 years ago with a dream of, of every immigrant has when they come to this country, which is uh, making the better, a better life for our children. And that's exactly what I have done all these 25 years, not only for my sons, but by, all, by, by my whole community. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, back here to you, Mr. Nunez. Um, the uh, state legislature makes a determination on the number of charter schools that are um, uh, acceptable and uh, allowed in, in the city of New York. If elected, would you advocate for increasing the charter school limit? Well, I must say that uh, I am for education. That's the first thing I want to say. Um, if charter schools work, then we need to increase. If charter schools don't work, then we need to decrease. What we need to create is a balance in our education system with the current uh, public uh, school system, which we need to improve. There is a lot of improvement that is needed in the public education system. But we have a program, which is the charter schools, that is, it is working. I mean, there is a problem with it, which is, you know, you need to be on a list and you need to be selected. It's a lottery system. So in a sense, it works, but it doesn't work for everybody. So we need to improve our education in a public education system so that the children that cannot be admitted into 
the charter schools can go to public school and receive the proper education. I am a, I am a, you know, an example of what a public education system can bring you. And I, I believe that anything that can work on that, we need to work so with. So your answer to the question is, if, if it were to come up before you as an assembly member, would you say, yes, I'd like to see uh, the limit increased, or you would say no? I would like to say the limit increase. You would. Mm -hmm. Others? Charter schools? Mm -hmm. Mr. Pichardo? Well, I, I think the, the inherent issue, uh, Mr. Nunez touched on, is that it creates a, 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 a system of inequity. Uh, my sister's a teacher. Uh, she, she teaches at public school in the Bronx. And her biggest complaint to me, to be quite honest, is that she's not given the ability to teach. She's not given the resources to teach, and she's a public school teacher. I'm a product of the public schools. I graduated from DeWitt Clinton High School in 2003, and I'm a product, I'm, I'm a product of SUNY Buffalo in 2007. And the fact of the matter is that the inherent issue with charter schools is that it creates a system of inequity. And we need to sort of um, give public schools the ability uh, to, to succeed and not necessarily uh, uh, castigate them for failure without giving them any resources. I understand that. And if it, if it were something to come uh, across my desk I, at, at its face value, I'd vote for it. No. Because I think there's, there's something that's left to be desired. We need to focus more on improving our public education. We need to focus more on getting the, the resources that these schools need because these are good teachers. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are good students and we're letting them fall by the wayside to, to favor another system. Okay. Look, I think, I, I think that uh, the problem with the, the education is that we have to make sure that our schools are fully funded. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to Albany, to ensure that our public schools are fully funded. And every, uh, every one of our children in our community have every resource that they are entitled to and they have a fair share. And that the, the, the achievement gap, and we can reduce the achievement gap and all of that, that actually our community, our children need. And I believe that that is the thing, that we make sure that the schools are fully funded. And, and of course, there is, there's gonna, there is a lot of inequality. And I would vote also now to increase the... Yeah, yeah I'm going to add, I mean, add, I, mean I have... I'm, I'm, a pr I'm, a, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, a proud, I'm a proud father of two kids. And, you know, I think we're all pro-education. And obviously, you know, my, my, my opponent here, Pichardo, can't be for charter schools when you have the United Federation of Teachers behind you. So he's already, he's, his hands is tied, whether it makes sense to have additional charter schools or not that's irrelevant because he his decision his mind is already made up so which i don't think as an assemblyman uh you have to be fair you have to look at what the options are in your table before you make a stand so yes i will 100 percent be uh for increasing charter schools and of course uh that that's not to say you know let's forget about the public school system because like i think everybody here i'm also a, a, a product of public school system but you have to be fair and an issue that we have to look at charter schools is what happened to the kids who are in special ed uh, and which kids are going into the charter schools. Are they really our kids from this neighborhood, from this community? Uh, and then looking at the lottery system, how real of a lottery is it? Is it going to be something that everybody's involved and you can see it in this transparency? Then, uh, but at the end of the day, I'm all for charter schools. Okay. Others, you want to well, I, I think, uh, I think Haley is basically talking out both sides of his mouth. Uh, one, he's saying that you know we should look at charter schools and expand them, but keep them fair. And then at the, at the second time, it's saying that you know we should you know, uh, disagree and, and, and push teachers out. I'm proud, to stand, I'm, I'm proud to stand with teachers that, that work in public schools. The ones that show up at six in the morning, and leave at three o'clock at night and care about their students and care about the fact that the, that the, that the system is uh, leaving them behind and it's teaching them by the numbers. And that's unfortunate. So, you know, Mr. Mr. Rivera can make whatever assumptions that he wants, but I'm proud to stand with teachers. I'm proud to stand with the UFT. Mr. Rivera, you wanted to say. I mean, I, I don't know where. Yeah, don't try to twist things around because they're the, the, the usual politics that we're used to, and that's exactly what we're in this race to trying to change it. So, first of all, uh, and I do have friends who are teachers, and yes, obviously they're not all for charter schools because you know they're public school teachers. So, uh, your sister, I'm sure, does a great job, and I'm sure she's a very proud of her of her profession. But let's be honest: not all teachers do what they're supposed to do, and not all schools are passing our kids. Right now, you know, we're at a point that schools are getting shut down instead of looking at them. As, as Yudelka said, to provide them additional resources. So uh, hopefully that needs to change, and we need an assemblyman or assemblywoman uh, that we can stand up and say, you're not shutting down our schools. Let's look at it and let's try to provide resources. So I'm not saying I'm playing both sides of the field. I'm not saying let's shut down schools and let's increase charter schools, but you have to be fair at the end of the day. And I am being fair. What, what I want to say you get is, the final words yes, I am a, father, a proud father of two. I, I have children in public school system. I'm telling you, at the end of the day, it is what is the best interest 
for our children's education as a whole. <coughs> now, if charter schools are working, we're not saying that we're, in, we're eliminating public schools, but we need to look at and weigh options. I mean, all universities are not the same. All schools are not the same. There's private schools, there's public schools. Now there's charter schools. So now, when we provide public schools with the proper, with the proper funding, like Judelka said, when we provide our teachers with the proper tools, my mother is a proud high school teacher. My sister is a teacher. I am pro teacher. I uh, listen. It is about the kids, and that is it. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rivera. Uh, needless to say, housing from two different angles: the conditions of existing housing and the lack of affordable housing, is a central issue for the 86th Assembly District. What's your plan? I mean, one other thing is, you know, as, as we did the petitioning process to get on the ballot uh, and visited a lot of buildings, and, and some of folks here have, may have more experience in that end if you want to give them credit for that. But uh, I think that the problem of, uh, I'm cautious uh, of the affordable housing that we're bringing in, who the developers are, first of all. Uh, we have to be more, more uh, focused on who, who, who we're selecting for developing our, our affordable housing. We have great developers in the Bronx. Uh, that we know, like Bronx Pro Real Estate Management, and they're not giving me any money, just for the record. Uh, and we have Mastermind. We have great developers here, so I'm all, first of all, looking at who's, who's going to invest in our borough. Um, and, and that's one. Now, two, you have to look at the conditions of these buildings and these uh, uh, folks who, who own the buildings. Uh, it's a great segue, and, and it's a great opportunity for me to say, and I don't think that you know, somebody in this panel, and, and that would be Pichardo, can stand with tenants because at the end of the day, he's already receiving money from the landlords and the folks who own these buildings. So that's a, 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 something that every voter should be very concerned about when one of us here is receiving money from landlords. At the end of the day, you go into Albany with your hands already behind your back and there's not much you're going to be doing for tenants. Uh, so I, like I said, I'm all for affordable housing. We need to increase it and then also look at the ones that we already have. Okay, Ms. Tapia, then Mr. Nunez, and I'm assuming you want to respond oh, as absolutely. well. absolutely. Uh, look, there's a... Uh, we have a, a real crisis, housing crisis, specifically in the 86. Uh, we have the, the rate that we have the highest homelessness in the 86 than any other district. We have 6,000 people that are homeless here in the 86 assembly district. <coughs> it is a big crisis. And, and every time I talk to people and I, over the years, that is the biggest help and the biggest job that I've done for them. It is connecting them with the government and, and all the intricacy of, of dealing with that. And, I, and, and in two years, uh, the state, uh, the New York State rent laws are going to expire. And, and we, have to, we need to have uh, an advocate, a strong advocate of the people in Albany to be able to actually rally with the people and change the laws that are going to favor our community. We also have to make sure that our NYCHA buildings, you know, it's, you know, there is a lot of money on spent for, sa for, for safety, for security, and maintenance that it hasn't been put into the buildings. We have to put accountability. We know all the corruption and everything that is going on with NYCHA. Those will be things that I will be doing when I'm elected. I mean, I think, I mean, it is imperative that our rent and our affordable housing, are, are, we have plenty of them for our, for our people. And I think, I mean, we have an opportunity to die in 2015 when the law is fired. Thank you, Mr. Nunez, and then you, Mr. Pichardo. I want to say that uh, it is deplorable, the, situ the housing situation in our district. I mean, like Judelka said, we have 6,000 homeless uh, in, in our district. And what I believe that we need to do is when either an assemblywoman or an assemblyman is elected, uh, someone that is independent, they need to preserve the current housing programs, especially for our seniors, so that we can stop the people from going, uh, even more people from going homeless and preserve the programs like Squeeze, Dree, and Epic. Now, once you do that, then we need to look into the programs and the monies that are, there, uh, are out there for policing, security, and for improving the buildings. Once we determine that, we need to rally and be a strong voice in Albany and have a very good constituent, constituent services in our local office so that our constituents can come to the office and we can actually help them because if we don't hear from them then there's nothing that we can do but there's a lot to be done. Mr. Pichardo? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Well, first of all, I find it incredibly disingenuous uh, that Haley is basically saying that I'm in the pocket of any developer or anything like that. This is a man uh, who worked for Pedro Espada that when housing advocates came to his office, he just blew, him off, blew them off and threw dollars at them because it was about affordable housing. I stood with tenants. I stood with tenants when the particular case of uh, a developer in the district um, basically cut off heat and hot water. If you want to go visit the tenants at 255 East 176th Street, you can ask them if I were meetings at them and trying to bring a certain developer to make sure that heat and hot water was provided to them, you can ask them. You can ask the people that I sat down with and helped them keep them in their homes. You can ask them if they helped them navigate through the legal system here in the, in the Bronx. And can you, act, you can ask them that I was able to connect them with non-for-profit organizations that helped them, you know, find a, a, a one-shot deal, have them find the, the, just to keep them in their homes. I've done that. I've fought with landlords, and I've recognized that they're good landlords in our district, but they are bad landlords. And, I, and, and my record has shown that bad landlords will not do, dis will not do business in this, in this borough, and I, and I have stood with tenants, and I find that incredibly disingenuous that Mr. Rivera would say that. I assume you want to respond. Well, I think everybody stood with tenants. I think I saw you at a rally of, 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 of the tenants as well and whatnot, and, and that's actually my, my landlord. But uh, so, so let, let's just put it on the record that, that, you know, you have not taken any money from landlords. Is that, can we say that? I've, uh, you can look at my record. It's all for public. No, it's a yes or no. I mean, uh, when you, you take can money look at from my the record. real estate board and the jobs for New York, which are the people, the millionaires that have, mm -hmm. Uh, investing in th that are a group of landlords and developers, mm -hmm. that's questionable. Mm -hmm. And whether it's you, whether it's Judelka or Kenny, I would bring it up. So it's not about you. It's the fact that you are the only one out of us four mm -hmm. that have, you know, taken money because it's all about money and you need the money to get those mailers out to us. We, all, we know that. Uh, and that's questionable. So at the end of the day, I ask the voters who are tuning in, who, who are watching, to question that because if I, if, if I take money from developers, then it's obviously that I'm not going to stand with tenants in Albany. That's, that's a given. So uh, just, to, just to close it up, I think that you know, some of us express that we need to fight for it uh, and be very independent when it comes to, to advocating for housing mm -hmm. in our community. You wanted to add something? I just want to Because he'll add, get the final yes, word. Yes, okay. We can I keep just, going. It's I just okay. want to add that at the end of the day, it's about our community and mm -hmm. the tenants, and it's about keeping affordable housing affordable. I mean, a $1,500 rent is not affordable. So we need to make sure that our tenants, our constituents, cannot get priced out of our neighborhoods where they've lived 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. With somebody like Mr. Pichardo, with you know taking money from from the landlords and from the finance, from from the other uh, community organizations that have to do with housing, you know that th th our community is not going to get the benefit. Okay. Mm -hmm. You, you, you can say something, and then I guess first you, Mr. Pichardo, and then uh, Ms. Tapia. You can. I'm proud to stand on my record. I'm proud to stand on the fact that I've been able to help uh, keep people in their homes. I've been, I've been, I'm proud to stand on the fact that I've worked with nonprofit organizations like New York Communities for Change, uh, Casa New Settlement, Northwest Bronx Clergy, uh, Clergy, uh, Clergy Coalition, and help tenants get the services that they need. So whether or not you believe that I'm going to be in the pockets of any individual, that's absolutely not true. I work for the people in the 86th Assembly District. I work for the people of the state of New York. I've worked for the people of the 33rd Senate District. And I'm proud of that record. And Ms. Well, Tapia I, and I, I, Mr. Rivera. I believe that we, we have to move forward and we have to make sure that we maintain the affordable housing that we have. But on top of that, we also create more affordable housing and we make sure that the money that is supposed to be, be spent in maintenance and in the national buildings and, and, and also in the safety and the security of those buildings because, I mean, we know what happened in there. I mean, Alice spent rightfully. And that, I mean, Chinacha is accountable for all, all the money that they get to do that. And I think, I mean, that's, that's what I have done all my 25 years. Okay. And I know that, I mean, I, yesterday I just met a constituency that stopped me on the street. And, and her problem was that, housing. And that's and because that they can afford it. We have Mr. to make it affordable for them. Mr. Rivera, final word. No, just to close it off, obviously, for the record, you know, Picardo did not say that he's not taking money. So that's, that's for me, that's a yes. But here, here's the thing. I, I think that just elaborating on what Yudelka said, uh, we need to stand up and we need to stop it before it's too late. And, and the conversation should be happening now, not a year before the, the, the law expires, because by then it may be too late. So uh, as an assemblyman, if I am elected, it's something that I would take priority, because everybody knows how rent is going up. 
uh, fast and, and we need to do something about it. Uh, Mr. Pichardo, how do we get Bronxites in the 86th Assembly Districts back to work? There are big uh, are, are there big development projects you have in mind that you see, gee, we could solve a problem that way? Or is the answer in small business and community level development? I think it's, it's, it's sort of a, a all hands on deck approach. Um, in, in my career, I've been able to, to work in, in, with a lot of education institutions of higher learning and help develop uh, business incubators. Um, with that being said, I think if we bring projects like that to our local community, uh, local CUNY centers like Bronx Community College, which falls in the 86th Assembly District, it'll do a lot of good. Also, we need to stop um, uh, penalizing on, on a sort of such a heavy level sort of the small businesses that exist um, in our district. Um, unfortunately, the city has had a priority and a prerogative to, to, to penalize uh, small businesses and give them these really heavy uh, fines and I'll work with my colleagues in the city and the state level to make sure that we we lower those fines because it's about ultimately it's about bringing jobs to this community figuring out creative ways of doing so and partnering with all uh, coalitions across the board from from SUNY to CUNY to community organizations to 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 all entities of government we need to it's an all-hands approach thank you others Mr. I believe I, I'm going to side with Mr. Pichardo on that. I, I believe it is uh, all hands on deck with regards to uh, getting the economic growth that we need in the 86th uh, Assembly District. I mean, we need to preserve the jobs that we have. We need to create create a mechanism to create jobs. And one of the things that I I would like to see done uh, is all of our seniors uh, that have you know. Uh, something that they can offer the youth, have them a, like a mentor program where they can, the, the, um, where the, oh, I'm so sorry, where the, um, the youth can actually benefit from it and actually go back to work. I mean, it, it, is, it is very sad as well that the city is using the small business as a cash cow, as Mr. Pichardo uh, alluded to. Mm -hmm. uh, they are using it as a cash cow and we need to stop it because the small businesses are the, what we need to get our economy going as well. Mr. Well, yeah. yes, sure. And, and, and uh, Victor was, was on point with the heavy fines. Uh, and tie, tying that in with the increasing rent uh, that's going on with these small businesses. And, and we've met, I'm sure, all of us small business owners who, are, who, know, who tell us the stories of how their rent goes, you know, skyrocket overnight. Uh, backroom deals, you know, things that are not on contract, give me cash and I'll resign, I'll, I'll do the contract over again at a higher rate. Uh, and they need help. Small businesses need help. They're desperately, I know that we have, you know, issues of housing and jobs and education, but they need our help. And, I, and, and, and if given the opportunity, uh, I will make that part of, uh, Look, of, of uh, this. Uh, the small businesses are the biggest job creators that we have in our community. And we have to maintain that and give them opportunity to continue to do that. But I also see, uh, think that we have to be creative in the, in the way that we do. I think, I mean, uh, our community and the Bronx is being uh, shortchanged and this, uh, this service because, I mean, we need, I mean, uh, uh, all, all the projects that can actually bring entrepreneurs and that can make our children to stay here when they graduate from school. Because I have four sons and they went to school. And when they come back from college, they're, they're not going to be any opportunity for them to stay here. They're going to have to leave. And, I, and then our community is going to fall back in the same cycle of poverty that we've been fighting for 25 years. I came here 25 years ago, and the, I was told this is the poorest borough in the country. And then it's 25 years after, and we still be in the poorest spot in the country. Mr. Just because, I mean, we, we don't flourish. Mr. Nunez and Mr. Pichardo can wrap it up. <clears throat> One of the things that I believe when I'm elected uh, state assemblyman, uh, we need to get community, um, community activists involved and community organizations involved in creating jobs. You know, a lot of unions have uh, programs where they train for free constituents just so that they can have something to, to go to the workforce. Once we do that and once we get our youth, you know, going through... Um, you know, they do, uh, uh, internships. internships, internships. Yeah. I'm sorry. My Spanish, my English, uh, <laughs> bilingual programs. Bilingual programs yeah. When you got, time. when you get, you know, I'm a product of, of, of the executive internship program in high school, mm -hmm. you know, and he gave me the tools 
to go to a law firm and actually go into law, so, which is a great thing. So when we do that, then we can create the jobs that we need in our community. Mr. Pichardo, you can wrap it up. Sure. It's, it's, it, ultimately, what this discussion is about is finding creative ways of stimulating the local economy and creating economic development for our, for our, for our neighbors and the folks who live in this community. And again, it's about you know, a, a sort of an all-hands-on-deck approach. It's not about focusing on one sector. It's about um, you know, obviously focusing on small businesses and also working with the educational institutions that not only fall within physically within the 86, mm -hmm. but with all the entire borough. And, and again, it's about creating a way and creating a pipeline uh, for, for new talent to take over new jobs because you know, ultimately um, everyone doesn't stay in a job forever and we need to figure out a way to, to, to link the gap. I want to ask a follow-up and, and sure. we'll just go down the road real sure. quick. If anybody, does anybody have a really big project they'd like to see? Something large that they'd like to propose and say, gee, this is a dream I'd like to see in the 86th? You do. Let's just be real quick about what it would be. It's creating a, a cohort of, of a couple of 20 students uh, to train and get the civil service exam and, and get jobs working as train conductors okay. and uh, bus operators. Anybody else? Well, it goes along with what he said, and I, for a minute there, I was scared he, he takes my idea. But be quick, because uh, I want to move on. It, right? it, it, it's mixed residential with seniors and youth and, and, and families. Intergenerational. So yes, probably. correct. Yes, uh, that, like I mentioned, said it, yeah. like I've already I'm said, it's an intergenerational program. I, I, would, I would work with economic development. I would, I would like to see a, 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 an incubator, a business incubator here for for entrepreneurs and for uh, for young people to actually be creative in what they're doing. And I would like to do that in one of the colleges that we have in the district, or maybe mm -hmm. outside the district that I benefit the majority of the 86th and, and uh, around. Ms. Tapia, this question for you, and in, in a way it summarizes some of the things we've talked about, and frankly a large percentage of the questions that we have asked tonight, might ask tonight, and in the other debates we've hosted here on Bronx Talk. The candidates say, we need more funding. I'd advocate for more funding. Well, let's face it. The candidates say it, but where do you find money in this economy where cutbacks are the name of the game? And second, why should voters think you would be the better advocate than your colleagues to get that funding? Well, uh, we, we get more funding uh, because, I mean, we have to tax uh, the rich people. The rich people have to be taxed and pay, and pay the fair share that they have to pay for, for all that they get, they're getting back from our community and, and for all the, that, all the work that we do and they get back the, the thing. I think, I mean, everybody has to pay the, the fair share. And I think if we pay, uh, if we tax the rich, we, our community is going to get all the funding that we need to, to ensure that we have better education, better schools, that we have uh, affordable housing, and that we have Only a few uh, minutes jobs. left, so let's get everybody Yes, in so, uh, and, and then why am I the best candidate? Because, I mean, I have raised my four children in this community. I've been here 25 years, and I know uh, the issues, not because uh, I, I learned, I read the issues, but because I lived through them and I had to fight uh, for those issues for my family yeah. and for the community. Yes. And I'm going to bring that to the table and I'm going to fight for that yeah. for yes. all my community yes. in Albany. Well, one of the things that should be looked at is funds that are already allocated. I mean, I take, for example, Campaign for Fiscal Equity versus New York State. That is a case that we actually have a judgment, millions of dollars out there to be collected and we haven't gone, we haven't gone to get it. That entails that the outside district, school, uh, school districts were receiving more money than New York City. So Campaign for Fiscal Equity, which is an organization, sued. And we, we got a judgment, and we mm -hmm. have to go out and get it. That is the first thing that needs to be done before we start going and allocating more money. And, you know, yes, we need to tax the rich, but we need to focus on the money that we actually are able to get readily for our community. Okay. Others? Well, yes, we do need to fight for a more progressive tax system here in New York State. And, uh, you know, and, and from what I've heard in, in my experience and after, the, after Governor Cuomo took office and sort of what's been going on with the uh, uh, political scandal, you know, we've, we did have a process and a system of, uh, of appropriations uh, or, or and member items built mm -hmm. into the budget. And so said, let's try to hurry it up so sure. we can get everybody in. I, I, I advocate for the fact that we should have these member items back re returned into the budget, um, but it has to be set in a, in, a, in a transparent and open way, and anyone who has a computer and access to the Internet can look exactly what my office allocates to what organization, and it's a, it's a, it's a merit-based process, not because, you know, X person that I know works at this organization. It's an open process. Mr. Rivera, did you want to say Yeah, something? I think that, you know, in, in terms of bringing funding into into the fold here, to, I think that we need to look at the commuter tax 
and, and I know that that conversation is, is kind of in the sideways right now. Some mayor candidates have talked about it, but I'm all for it, along obviously with taxing the rich. Uh, but the mayor candidates, I mean, the, the commuter tax is all that we should be looking at uh, from the state perspective and, and, and help bring more revenue, more money into the district as well. We just have a couple of moments, and I have a, a different sort of a question that I want to propose. It's something I thought about a couple of weeks ago, and this sure. is probably as good a time as any to bring it up. Let's just say that a news reporter, whether a TV reporter from a major station, were to come over to you and will ask each of you a mm -hmm. chance to respond and say, what's the one story you think should be on the news about the 86th Assembly District, if you had the opportunity to tell one story in the media and tell the city or the world, what would that story be? Uh, that story should be a program that the Bronx Community College has for uh, immigrants to actually correct their status or bring mm -hmm. the status into a fold. They actually have a program right now. Uh, they received a grant. And it's not being publicized, you know. So, you, uh, so you, I, I just want to move along so sure. everybody gets a chance. So your idea would be to publicize uh, an existing program uh, that supports immigrants because you think that's worthwhile for well, the world Well, it supports to see. the immigration reform where they can actually go there and actually get their status correct. Correct. Got it. I think the Bronx is a melting pot of the city. Uh, there's a lot of issues. Uh, we know that. We have a lot of barriers. We have a lot of obstacles to overcome. But I think at the end of the day, we all have hope that there's a better future ahead of us. Uh, primarily for our kids, my two kids, and, and Yudelka's four, and so yours what, what would be the story you want I, to tell? I think that uh, th this is a Bronx that will be, that have gone through a lot, uh, politically, if you will, at the local level, but at the end of the day, we'll come up on top. Uh, okay. and, and we'll so you would want a positive story a positive about the story. Bronx. And it's a melting pot. Because you have Dominicans, right. Puerto Ricans, so that's West African. You, yes. Mr. I think we could, we could definitely focus on the, the potential that our borough has to offer, especially within our young community. If you look at the graduation rates at uh, Monroe College, actually, they're quite impressive. I think if we put in a story and we focus on the fact that there's Bronx kids locally who live in the 86th Assembly District who are graduating at pretty high rates. Uh, they attend college because they have the right resources. They have the right support. I think that should be a story, and that should be focused on, because it should be focused on the, the, the amount of potential that is in, in our borough. Ms. Tapia? I think we should, it should focus on the, on the future, the good future that we might, that we ambition for our community. And that would be it. I mean, I would, I would like to see uh, the a story of our, our, our children. My son plays basketball. And I, would like, and I go to every, every basketball court around with him all the time. So I would like uh, that story out to see how the kids are out there playing and doing the positive feeling, how we need more more basketball courts and more playgrounds for the kids to be actually doing the right thing. That's, that, that's what I would like to see. Uh, just down the road real quick, who do you support for mayor? Um, I, not yet? I, I, I'm not supporting Undecided. anyone Undecided. I haven't right. decided yet. Mr. Pichardo. Bill Thompson. You, Mr. Rivera? Uh, Bill de Blasio. Bill de Blasio. All right. Uh, we've come to the point where we're going to do um, uh, closing statements. And I want to thank you all for your participation in the debate. By prior agreement, Mr. Nunez gets the first one. I would like to say to the TV audience that uh, my name is Ken Nunez. I am running for New York State Assembly. I would like to go with you to Albany, uh, be your voice, uh, and uh, I would like to be your strength so that we can bring those resources we desperately need for our community, not just for housing, not just for education, not just for our seniors, for our youth, uh, for small businesses, but for the entire Bronx community in the 86th district. We need to rally and make something great of our community. We need to be an example of greatness, that we can be the phoenix bird and come out of the seconds. ashes. Thank you. And okay. September 10th, please vote for me, Kenny Nunez. Thank you very much. Mr. Rivera? No, well, uh, my name is Haley Rivera, is a uh, running Democrat for State Assembly. I'm a proud father of two kids in, in this neighborhood. and, and when I got in this race, it was for the thinking of them and their future. And, and Lee Saley and Joey, there are their names. And, and I wake up every morning thinking of them and what's going to become of their future, of our neighborhood. Uh, and that's what motivates me every day to get up so, and fight every day in the hopes that, that, that the voters will trust me with their vote and confidence, confidence on, on Tuesday, September 10th. Uh, for the last 11 years, I've run a nonprofit helping kids uh, do volunteer projects and get involved in the civics and of it and, and, and also helping their families. So, uh, I also put out my record out there. I ask folks to also do some research, Google, Google me, Google everybody here, uh, and that you can ten seconds. You can look at our record and look what we've done and where we come from. Uh, we're not strangers to this community. I'm not a stranger. I'm a product 
uh, and hope that on Tuesday, September 10th, you cast your vote for me. Thank you, Mr. Petrano. First of all, Gary, thank you for the opportunity and uh, my opponents for the spirit of debate. And, uh, uh, you know, my record speaks for itself. Uh, I, you know, our communities, my neighbors and I were tired of the constant political scandal that's plagued our community. Um, I am proud of the record that I've had uh, working with two of the best public servants that the state has to, that the state has to offer. State Senator Chuck, Sh uh, U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer and State Senator Gustavo Rivera. And in that time, I've been able to learn two things. First, how to provide effective constituent service, and also to provide to be a strong advocate for the issues that matter most. Education, jobs, and housing. I am committed to being the change that this district and this community needs, and I know that I will be accountable and transparent to everything I do. So I ask for your vote, and I ask for your, your, your support come this September 10th, and thank you. Ms. Tapia? Uh, well, thank you, Gary, for having us tonight, and, and, and the viewers to to see the difference that, that we bring to the table when we're going to Albany. And I'm, I'm running, I am Judal Kachapia. I am the district leader of the Assembly District 86. And I'm one of the four that I raised in this community. And I know the issues because I learned the issues raising my children. I believe that this time uh, we need a different perspective uh, in the table when we sit down in Albany to sort all the problems that we have in our community and all the issues. And I believe that I'm the only one who brings the compassion, the love, the, the experience, uh, the building coalition, and, and the experience of working in the community for 25 years to come and solve all those problems. I am I'm gonna be the strong advocate that I've always been working for the community. I don't work for any elected officials. I have worked 25 years okay. for my community and for my people in Thank the 86 Assembly District and throughout the Bronx. And that's what I Thank will bring you. to the table. Candidates, uh, I want to thank you for the debate tonight, and uh, I know you all agree with me when I talk to our viewers and say, everybody come out and make sure you vote for your favorite candidate on September 10th. It's the only way we're going to get anywhere. And if you do have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, then you email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com or make a comment on our Facebook page and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Archives of the show are available at bronxnet.org. You click Bronx Talk on the right-hand navigation bar, and we invite you to become a fan of Bronx Talk on Facebook. Next Monday night, it's the candidates in the Democratic primary for the 8th City Council District, which includes El Barrio in East Harlem, Manhattan Valley, and now 50% of the district is in Mott Haven in the Bronx. Before we close tonight, one note. Two weeks ago on the show, we gave incorrect information for the website to Dr. Bola Omotosho's campaign. The correct one is Vote bolaomotosho.com and we regret the error. Thanks to producer Jane Floro. Our director is Nialani Rodriguez. Studio coordinator is Helen Greenberg. And of course, thanks to our cast of thousands behind the scenes. And we'll see you next week. And to Dina, by the way, get well soon and come back to the show. We'll see you next week too. to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition.